Hey guys, this is Huang Pham here, and this is the first episode of my new series, The Dive. This is a series where I go through some of my favorite photos and take you guys behind the scenes, and I go over the camera settings and the gear that I use to get that photo. Today for the first episode of The Dive, we are going to go to one of my personal favorite places and one of the most unique places in the world. This is the Upper Antelope Canyon. So this is the image that we're gonna be diving into today. This is an image that I took of the world famous light beams in the Upper Antelope Canyon when I went in September of 2019. First off, this image was taken with an F11 aperture to make sure that the whole canyon was sharp. The ISO for this image was at 500 because the canyon itself was quite dark, so that added a little bit of light without adding a lot of noise to the image. The focal length for this image is 35 millimeters, and for this canyon, you're really not gonna want anything that's more narrow than, say, 50 millimeters, but I was using a 16 to 35 millimeter, and all of my images were closer to the 16 millimeter side. Um, this is one of the few images that I actually took that was at 35 millimeters. So I personally would recommend a very wide angle lens. The shutter speed for this image is one tenth of a second. And because I had a tripod with me, I was able to get clear shots without any movement or jitter. So the next thing to note is that this is an HDR image. It is comprised of seven bracketed shots. What that means is I took three shots that were underexposed, one correctly exposed, and three overexposed shots to get all of the dynamic range from the, the dark shadows to the bright light beam to be able to get all of that and put it together into one image with all of the shadows and all the highlights without anything blown out or too dark. If we go ahead and we zoom into the image in the back, we'll see that the canyon itself is still very sharp because of the HDR. We are able to get the details out of the shadows from the overexposed shots. And again, merging the underexposed shots, we're able to get the light beam without blowing any of the light out, except for the little patch of light down at the bottom. but. It was very, very bright for the, the, the canyon itself, which was insanely dark. So this was the best that I could do in that situation. The composition itself is not something that I picked. So on the photography tour that I went on, we were with a bunch of other photographers and they essentially lined everybody up and said, this is your spot, snap away, so that everyone was lined up in a way that they wouldn't get in anyone else's way. But at the same time, that meant that the only composition I could do essentially was a little bit of panning and tilting from the spot that I was in. However, I'm still really happy with how the shot turned out and I'm glad that I was able to actually get the angle that I did because some other people with either bigger tripods or bulkier equipment weren't quite able to maneuver around between people to get uh, this kind of an angle, but I personally really like it. So this is where I'll bring up the photo tour. As of the beginning of 2020, they have stopped all of the photo tours inside of the Upper Antelope Canyon. What this means is you won't be able to bring a tripod into the canyon anymore. So that's gonna make taking shots like this a lot harder if you want to do long exposures or things with shutter speeds that aren't something that you can handhold. The reason why they canceled these photo tours is because of photographers that were complaining on the tour saying that they weren't able to get the shots they wanted because of the crowds and the people. And then also people complaining about the photo tour people with all of their tripods and moving around the canyon. Because when you're on the photo tour, the guys will go shove you around the uh, standard tour people to get you to certain locations while the sunbeams are out so that you can get these kinds of shots and they will hold people back so that people don't walk into your shots so that you can get your uh, clear shots. The problem is they cause a lot of traffic holding people up and also squeezing by people through this very very narrow canyon. So that was uh, one of the contributing factors to the reason why they decided to cancel the photo tour. So as someone who has done both the photo tour and the standard tour, I will say that it is very congested in there, just with the people alone. And then once you have your tripods, if you're a photographer carrying it around, it's a hassle. And then 
as someone who doesn't have a tripod, it's annoying getting hit by tripods all the time when they're moving throughout the canyon. So I can understand their decision and I hope this allows people to be able to uh, have more room within the canyon as, the, as everyone is now gonna be on the standard tour. So with that being said, now to go into my personal recommendations for if you wanted to go to the Upper Antelope Canyon and take a shot like this, I would say, first off, you need a wide angle lens. As far as aperture goes, you're really just gonna need something in the range of f8 to f11. You don't need a fancy lens that has f1.8 or f2.8 because you want the canyon itself to be sharp. So don't worry about those lenses that are gonna let in the maximum amount of light, even though the canyon is dark, but you're gonna compensate for that by using a slower shutter speed and bumping up the ISO. As for shutter speed, that's up to you, depending on the situation that you're in, the lighting changes all the time as you're going throughout the canyon. There's chambers that are really bright and chambers that are really dark, so shutter speed is probably what you're gonna be adjusting the most, and then probably next the ISO. So you're gonna want a shutter speed that's gonna be quick enough that you can handhold, but at the same time, slow enough to be able to capture as much detail as possible. So that's, some, that's something that I can't say um, there's a general number for. That's just gonna be something that's gonna be depending on where you are and the lighting situation that day. So with a wide angle lens and a pretty decent camera, I think you'll be able to take stunning photos at the Upper Antelope Canyon, even though they're not doing the photo tours anymore, you can't bring a tripod in, there's still plenty of opportunities to take stunning photos. And every time you turn a corner there, it's like a whole new composition. There's gonna to be tons and tons and tons of photos to be had in the canyon. It's absolutely beautiful. And if you're worried about the perfect camera settings or anything like that, when you go, the guides themselves are very knowledgeable. You can't go into this canyon without a guide. It's all Navajo tour guided only throughout the canyon. So you have to go on a tour, but all the guides are knowledgeable and they know um, good camera settings for the various situations that you'll be in. So they can help you out with that too, uh, once you're there on the spot. That is all I have for you guys today. And this has been the Upper Antelope Canyon and the world famous light beam. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will also leave a link to my Instagram page if you are interested in checking out some of my other photos. And if there are any photos on there that you wanna see a video like this for, let me know. If you found this helpful, go ahead and smash that like button, hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this. And on that note, I, We'll see you guys in the next one.